six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here today. We're going to take a quick walk around here and look at some of the different applications that we have for precision farming technology and also show you some of the advances that we've been working on in those departments. Some of the most fascinating advancements in agriculture have been happening in this space and there's some really cool stuff to look at and learn. So we're not going to do any deep dives today and go into too much detail to bore you, but if you're a person who's not been around this kind of equipment before or has been watching our videos about smaller Kubota tractors and other you know, construction equipment and other things before, uh, this kind of stuff might be really interesting to you. Uh, there is far more technology in farming than anybody would guess. And we're going to walk around here and take a look at some of the exciting new things that we're doing. So the first part of a farmer's growing season is usually planting, right? We're going to go out with our planter and plant whatever crop we're using in the ground. Most commonly corn, right? So a tractor like this would hitch up to a corn planter, go out to the field and plant corn in about 30 inch rows, uh, typically. As we're going out, we're planting in those 30 inch rows. Commonly, we would use row clutches on the planter so that if we overlap any areas that we've already planted, we're going to shut off the individual rows so that we don't double plant. We double plant, we end up choking out the other crops around it, reducing yields in the end. A tractor like this is going to pull that planter with the intelligence in the planter to know where to plant, and the tractor itself also is going to know how to steer and maneuver through that field. So a big machine like this will have a roof radio up there on the top that has a very advanced GPS antenna in it that's going to tell the tractor exactly where it's at in the field. As it's working through the field then, the tractor is actually going to steer itself so the wheels can automatically turn left to right in order to keep the tractor driving in exact straight lines and exact placements. So if we were 30 inches on one row, you know, between our rows as we go across, when we come back with our planter the other directions, we want to be 30 inches from that next pass keeping that spacing as consistent as possible to get as even and productive of a stand of corn as we can. Once we've planted and our crop has come up, the next thing we always need to do is apply pesticides and fertilizers. So we're gonna walk over here and take a look at our New Holland sprayer and see how that machine's using precision also. This sprayer will have typically about a 90 to 120 foot boom across it and across that boom a series of nozzles and the most modern technology that we have today on those nozzles will allow every nozzle individually across the entire boom to be able to turn on and off. And that happens because as this machine with this massive boom is driving around and it comes to areas where it's already sprayed, those nozzles are going to turn off so that you don't double apply, uh, potentially burning crops and getting lower yields. Um, you don't over apply in our area also the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Uh, we have a lot of concerns about runoff and uh, waterways and stuff. Um, so the less amount of product we can put down, the better. So there's a lot of things pushing us to always be putting down the proper amount of chemical in the proper place. Precision in agriculture really starts to drive that. So, you know, we have a, a GPS monitors that can be, you know, no more accurate than the one in your car, but as we drive into greater levels of precision and things like these individually controllable nozzles, we can get down to looking at fields at an inch or below accuracy. If you look across the boom here, this boom has collapsed back against the machine and about every 18 inches or so, we've got a nozzle running the whole way across. There's this little module right here, which is called a PWM module that can individually turn each one of these on and off. So once our crops have grown and we're ready to go out and harvest, we're gonna go out with our new Holland Combine. These things will always have precision guidance monitors on them for monitoring the crop that's coming up into the combine. So as we're moving through the field, we know which parts of our field are producing good yields for us. And we can use that information in the computer in following years to know what crops are best to put where and where to apply pesticides and fertilizers and that kind of stuff to get the best results and returns out of our crops. A lot of that data manipulation may start to seem like overkill, but in farming, every percentage of extra productivity that you can get out of every extra square footage of ground is what really leads to your profitability. And so a lot of money and a lot of time is spent in machines like this analyzing the data from the crop that's coming up into the machine in order to be able to make the best decisions for the future. So this 12 inch square sitting on top of most of this equipment is becoming more and more common anymore. If you go look at pretty much all of our sprayers, all of our big tractors, they're all going to have a large roof antenna like this up on top of them. This antenna receives GPS signals on the same satellites that your car and truck would look at, but then some additional groups of satellites as well. Your cars, your smartphones and everything talk to a group of satellites called L1. There's also another group called L2 that outputs another set of signals from the same satellites. In addition to that, there's satellites for a system called WAS that airplanes use, a Russian system called GLONASS, which is very commonly used. 
Uh, there's Chinese and European systems that we don't see here in the US. All these systems are up there in the sky, all beaming guidance information down to this receiver, which collects all of it and does its best to interpret all of that information and come up with the exact position of where it's at. Um, all of those satellites, though, all have to fight coming through the atmosphere. And atmospheric delays and changes always are going to alter those signals, making it difficult for this thing to really, really hone in to the precise location on a year-over-year -year basis. These things can do very, very well on a pass-to-pass -pass basis, but for year-over-year -year accuracy to be able to reuse it, a lot of the information that's corrected, it needs another source of information from something that's staying still. So there's various sources of that correction signal where ground-based operating stations are sitting stationary listening to those same satellite signals, but because it's not moving, it can kind of compensate for the differences between those satellites and then feed that correction signal over to the machine. That can be done through a lot of different services, um, Omnistar, Trimble Range Point, uh, but most often we're using a system called RTK. And it happens we also operate our own RTK network so we can take a walk inside here and take a look at our base stations. So what our base stations are doing is listening to all that satellite information and then pushing that correction signal over here to the radio. So I mentioned that we operate our own network of RTK base stations. This is the hardware that we typically have been using the most of. Um, this is a, a radio from a company called Novatel. Um, Novatel is not a very well-known company in the space of GPS equipment, but they do manufacture a lot of the components and parts that are in other vendors' stuff. Um, we buy these direct from Novatel typically. And if you look at these, basically what this thing has is a connection for an antenna, power, and in our case, an ethernet jack. And so we're gonna screw our GPS antenna onto here this thing is gonna do all of its calculation magic and then push the correction for our GPS devices across that ethernet port right there. Um, this is a GPS antenna, and not radically different than the roof antennas that you typically have on a moving tractor. Um, they listen to the same satellites as those do, uh, but typically these are a little bit larger and a little bit more sensitive than what the ground-based versions are. And that's typically connected with some heavy gauge cable, you know, that's gonna resist interference and that kind of stuff up to the roof. Um, so really not that complicated. This base station hardware, frankly, isn't any different in most cases than the rover-based versions. Um, these just are a lot more expensive because of the additional functionality that they include. So this may be a little bit difficult to visualize exactly, but the process of getting the correction information from this base station down to the rover goes something like this. You know, this thing generates the correction, outputs the correction to a collection point, which is called a caster. Um, an N-trip caster. So the, the caster will sit, it'll collect all the information from the different base stations, and then feed that information out to the different rovers. We can get that information from the caster down to the rover using either dedicated radios. Uh, a Trimble DCM 300 is really used uh, in Tuacom, makes some great modems. More often than not now, we see a lot of customers moving towards using their cell phones, frankly, to be able to do that. And the reason is simply for cost, right? You already own your cell phone. You're already paying for your data plan. There's no extra stuff to buy. So in our case, we usually frequently will use this. Uh, we wrote an app to run on an Android cell phone that connects to a Bluetooth dongle that will then pass that signal from the Entrip caster that's stored on our server farm down to the app and then from the app down to the individual tractor's radio. So by using those pieces, we're using a lot more commodity hardware now in order to make all of this work. You know, where this stuff used to be incredibly expensive, radios cost thousands of dollars, um, tens of thousands of dollars in a lot of cases. We're now starting to see a lot of technology coming from drones and cell phones and other areas and making its way into agriculture, really dragging the price of this stuff down. So subscriptions are becoming less expensive and technology's costs are dropping like a rock where we can use you know, Android cell phones, Apple iOS devices, uh, Bluetooth dongles in order to make all of this a lot more accessible now than what it used to be. We uh, sell this signal that we operate here ourselves, um, and we also participate in a network called Digifarm that we're able to sell a correction signal like this almost across the entire country. So if you're in an area that you'd like to be able to drive in straighter lines or you're in a precision application where things just don't feel like they work as well as they should, um, a correction signal, specifically RTK, can really make those things feel a lot more seamless and work a lot better. So we've got a great group of guys here willing to help you through these processes. So if we can help you, you know, pick up a correction signal or install some new equipment in your tractor, give us a call here at Messix. 
We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com.